What's going on movie lovers and welcome back to another adventure here at the Outpost. It's time once again to dive into the collection. I've been kind of putting it off because there's so much to go through, but I figured that we got to do it. I'm going to do it in two chunks. We already did our steel books. Now we're going to do our box sets and all of our boutique labels. So that's Arrow Video, Criterion, Kino Lorber, Scream Factory, Vestron, all that good stuff. I figure I'm going to do them in two halves. We're going to do all that stuff. And then in the next video, I'll do my A through Z Blu-ray 4Ks and all that stuff. So we're going to split this into two halves, kind of try and make it a little bit more bearable so we can go through all of this stuff because we got a lot of movies to get through. Our collection has grown immensely over the last year, and it is so wild to see just how much it has grown and how much we've added to it over the years. But as always, before we dive into that, if you can, if you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button if you're looking to watch all this more good, juicy content that you want to see, all these sweet rankings and all that stuff and all showing off the collection, all that hoopla, hit that subscribe button and drop a like if you're feeling froggy but without further ado we're going to dive into all that good stuff right now we're going to kick it off with the box sets i have them in no particular order i literally just took them off the top of the shelves and threw them down here so we'll just go through what's straight off the pile right at top and that is starting us off the critters collection that is critters one through four i have not watched these movies in god knows how long i think the third one is the only one i can kind of remember simply because leonardo dicaprio was in it We've got the Jurassic World 5 movie collection. Absolute classic movies in there. We've got the Matrix trilogy. Matrix, Matrix Revolutions, and Matrix Reloaded. Not in that order. We've got the Godfather trilogy. Godfather, Godfather Part 2, the Coda, and then this sweet little bonus disc at the end there. We've got the Batman 4 film collection from the 90s. Two Tim Burton ones and two Joel Schumacher's some interesting movies there from the 90s i love them because i grew up on them so even the terrible ones like batman and robin still have a lovely place in my heart and then the far far superior christopher nolan batman movies with batman begins the dark knight and the dark knight rises movies that you've already seen if you watch the steelbook collection but they're gonna kind of come in here in the box sets again anyway you've got the hobbit trilogy We've got the Hunger Games 4 movie collection there. We've got the Back to the Future trilogy. We've got the Indiana Jones 4 movie collection. And lastly, we've got the Kingsman collection. It's a good little healthy bit of steel books there. We've got the Karate Kid trilogy right here. Karate Kid, Karate Kid Part 2, Karate Kid Part 3. I have to rewatch these. I haven't watched them in God knows how long, so they're definitely due for a rewatch. We've got the Fast and Furious 8 movie collection. Picked this up way back in the day, right before Fast 9 came out. And then now Fast 10 is on the horizon, so I'm sure they're going to put out another one of these soon enough, making this very obsolete. I've got the Mel Brooks collection here, which is just a collection of all of his greatest hits and some lesser known movies there. We got Blazing Saddles, High Anxiety, History of the World Part 1, Robin Hood Men in Tights, Silent Movie, The Twelve Chairs, To Be or Not to Be, and Young Frankenstein. Blazing Saddles and History of the World Part 1 are two of my favorite movies of his. And then we've got the Alien Quadrilogy, which has Aliens, Aliens, Alien 3, and Alien Resurrections. This Alien one and the Mel Brooks one are both just DVDs. They're the only DVD box sets that I have left in my collection. We've got the Harry Potter 8 film collection right here. Solid bit. We got the Lord of the Rings trilogy. We've got the Predator 4 movie collection. We've got Volume 1 of the Universal Classic Monsters, which comes with Dracula, Frankenstein, the Invisible Man, and the Wolfman. And then we've got Volume 2 that comes with The Mummy, The Bride of Frankenstein, Phantom of the Opera, and The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Just classic movies right there. We've got Star Trek, the four-movie collection. I wish beyond wish that I didn't get this and I waited till I can get the individual slip covers to now go with five and six but such is the life of a collector sometimes we've got the underworld five movie collection yes one two three four five there's five of these movies if you can believe it and we've got it for some reason 
<laughs> I've only seen three of them, the first three. Uh, so the first two in theaters, I watched the third one here one day for some reason. And I, so at some point in my life when I'm feeling froggy enough, I'll watch the last two. And then we've got the piece de resistance of box sets right here. That is Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which is all nine movies in here, 4K. It's just absolutely stellar collection right there. Freaking phenomenal. I love this because I love me some Star Wars. That does it for our box sets. Now we're going to dive into our Arrow movie collection. Yes, it is. It is Arrow movie time. I don't have as much as other people. Um, uh, Arrow video can be kind of expensive. Um, so I only try and collect movies that I love and want to have as part of this collection. I don't go in and just buy up as much Arrow. Like some of them, as you can see, I'm huge in the Kino and huge in the Scream, so I pick up as much of those as possible. Um, Arrow is one of those ones that I am not. But I do have a decent amount of titles here. Starting it off with An American Werewolf in London. I love this movie. We've got Children of the Corn. Movie scared the shit of me as a kid. We've got the 90s Flatliners. A little classic right there. We got one of my favorite movies from the 60s, and that is Major Dundee. We've got this one was somehow found cheap, which is why I picked it up. This was a blind buy that ended up being just absolutely god awful. Uh, that is my stepmother is an alien, but it is pretty sweet to see um, Allison Hannigan in there in a young role. Pre-American Pie and How I Met Your Mother. Uh, we got RoboCop, an absolute fucking classic. We got another classic, Tremors. We've got True Romance. Freaking just phenomenal movie right there. And then we've got, last but not least, a wild movie, Wild Things. And now we move along to our Criterion section. This is another movie that I try not to collect too much from simply because Criterion can be god-fucking-expensive. But I... It would be a lie to say that I don't fall victim to their sales. Whenever they have sales, I end up picking up a shitload of these movies because I'm just hooked on a lot of these movies and I like the aesthetic of the criteria and sets and how they come. We kick that off with 12 Angry Men. One of my favorite Billy Wilder movies, Ace in the Hole. One of my favorite Roy Scheider movies, All That Jazz. One of my favorite Cary Grant movies, Arsenic and Old Lace. We've got Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon. I still have to watch this movie. I guess I should go through and say which movies I've watched and which I haven't. Um, that is one that I have. I think that's the first one we've come up to that I haven't seen so far through most of these. I don't know. But we'll, we'll follow from now on. I haven't seen Barry Lyndon. Movie I have seen, though, is Blowout. Freaking just fantastic movie. The underrated Brian De Palma movie. I freaking love it. John Travolta and Nancy Allen are really good in it. Um, a movie that I still have yet to see is Bringing Up Baby. Got to because I love me some Cary Grant. We've got Deep Cover. It's a great Lawrence Fishburne and Jeff Goldblum movie. Uh, an underrated Denzel Washington movie, Devil in a Blue Dress. We got another one of my favorite Billy Wilder movies, Double Indemnity. We've got a great, great fucking James Stewart and Richard Attenborough movie, Flight of the Phoenix. We got Akira Kurosawa's High and Low. I still need to watch that bad boy. We got Humphrey Bogart, Baby My Hero in High Sierra. We've got the Lady Snowblood collection. Comes with the two movies. This movie is, where, uh, is what Kill Bill was heavily influenced by. I still have to watch these. We've got The Last Temptation of Christ. Very wild Martin Scorsese movie. We've got Malcolm X. I still have yet to see this. I know this is one of those just classics that I just haven't gotten around to and every time I think I'm going to finally do it. Just the long run time wards me off. But I'm going to get to there. I want to see this. Denzel Washington is one of my favorite actors of all time so I need to get in and see one of his seminal classics. We got Memories of Murder. Fantastic Korean uh, movie. We got Mississippi Masala. Another Denzel Washington movie here that I still have yet to see. Another movie that I've yet to see in the zombie category, Night of the Living Dead, the OGs. Gotta check this bad boy out soon enough. Uh, another Boon John, Bong Joon, Bong, Boon John. I am fucking all over the place sometimes. Bong Joon Ho movie that I have yet to see is Okja. 
We got One Night in Miami. We've got The Parallax View. This is a movie that I still have to watch. We got two of my favorite Jackie Chan movies, Police Story and Police Story 2. Just some of the best kung fu movies you'll ever watch. Uh, you need to check those out if you like Jackie Chan in any way, shape, or form. We got Absolute Martin Scorsese classic here, Raging Bull. We've got The Sound of Metal, just an absolutely phenomenal movie for, in 2020. We got Summertime. I still have to see this movie. We've got The Thin Red Line, one of the few Terrence Malick movies that I don't hate. We've got Akira Kurosawa's Throne of Blood. I still have to check that bad boy out. We've got The Virgin Suicides. It's a great little movie right there. And the last but not least, an absolute classic, a movie I never thought I'd see in the Criterion, and that is Wally, that adorable little robot in the flesh right there. Wally, just an absolute classic. Up next, we've got my favorite boutique studio, which is Kino Lorber, and we kick it off with A Fistful of Dollars, fantastic Sergio Leone movie. Another amazing Billy Wilder movie right there. We've got The Apartment. We've got Black Heart, Black Heart. Oh my God, I'm dropping shit all over the place. Black Moon Rising. We got Break Heart Pass, Charles Bronson flick. We got Break Out, another Charles Bronson flick. We got Chato's Land, another Charles Bronson flick. I haven't seen Chato's Land yet. We got Deep Star Six, I haven't seen this yet. We've got Dress to Kill, just another fantastic Brian De Palma movie. We got Eastern Promises, just a great fucking Viggo Mortensen movie. We've got The Iger Sanction. This is just fantastic. This is one of my favorite Clint Eastwood movies overall. We got Escape from Alcatraz, another great Clint Eastwood. We got Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, just freaking incredible movie right there. We got, for a few dollars more, Clint Eastwood, Sergio Leone striking again. We've got FX and FX2. I've only seen the first one, which was a solid little movie right there. We've got The Great Escape. We've got High Plains Drifter. We've got The Horse Soldiers, John Wayne and William Holden. Still have to watch this. We got In Bruges, fucking masterful movie right there. We got In the Heat of the Night, one of my favorite fucking Sidney Poitier movies. We got Indecent Proposal. We've got Invasion of the Body Snatchers, movie fucked me up something fierce when I watched it. We got Killer's Kiss, I still have to watch that bad boy. We've got The Killing. I still have to watch that bad boy. We got Misery. Just fantastic Stephen King adaptation right there. We've got Mr. Majestic, another Charles Bronson flick. I still have to watch that bad boy. We've got Mystery Men. Just a great movie from the 90s. We got Nobody's Fool, Paul Newman. I still have to watch this bad boy. We got Out of Sight, another great 90s movie. Steven Soderbergh, George Clooney. We got Paths of Glory, which is a fantastic fucking Kirk Douglas movie. We've got The Score. There's a neat little mid-2000s uh, thriller right there. We've got the absolute classic, Silence of the Lambs. Another Billy Wilder. There is no such thing as a bad Billy Wilder movie. Some like it hot. We got The Taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. Just a great fucking action movie right there. Robert Shaw is just fantastic in this. We got Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. I still remember going to a uh, screening of this before it was released. It was just a great fucking movie. Tropic Thunder. One of the most hilarious classics of the mid-2000s. Twilight, this was a solid 90s thriller. I actually saw this on Netflix. Uh, I remember when it was first on there and loved it and I always wanted to collect it. So I was super happy once I saw that it was being released by Kino. We got The Usual Suspect. Great movie. Fucking first thing written by Christopher McQuarrie, baby. Fucking legend that guy is. And then we've got The Valachi Papers, the Charles Bronson movie that I've yet to see. 
And then we finish it off with The Valdez Horses, another Charles Bronson movie that I still have to watch. Just classic Charles Bronson material right there. I love Charles Bronson. I want to collect as much of his movies as I can, and I just can't wait to go through and do a marathon one day. Now we move on to our Scream Factory. Along with Kino, Scream Factory is the other um, boutique label that I love. Just fantastic. They're always putting out heat. We kick it off with Alligator, just a fucking just silly-ass movie in the vein of Jaws. It's just so just wildly entertaining. Uh, we had Sam Raimi's Army of Darkness. We've got the original Black Christmas. We've got Candyman. This movie fucked me up as a kid. I remember not sleeping for like 48 hours after I watched it for the first time. We've got Carrie. I actually just watched this not too long ago. It was a fantastic movie. I think the scene where she goes nuts and the blood gets drained on her is one of the best fucking film scenes. Like Brian De Palma was an absolute legend. Um, we've got Child's Play, classic. I'm knocking shit over. Got to reach for now. We got Child's Play two, and we've got Child's Play three. Just neat little classic horror movies right there. We've got The Craft. It's a fun little witchcraft movie. We've got Escape from New York, absolute classic John Carpenter movie. Kurt Russell is the fucking man. We've got The Fog. Is a neat little John Carpenter movie as well. We've got now, we're going to bang them out. we got the original Halloween. We've got Halloween 2. We've got Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. My personal favorite of all of the sequels. We've got Halloween 4. We've got Halloween 5. And then we've got the Halloween collection right here, which is 6, H2O, and Resurrections. A bunch of little classics right there. We've got Happy Death Day. I don't have the sequel uh, because you can't find it anywhere to order it online and there was just too much money, so I've just been waiting. We've got The Howling. This is a fun little movie from Joe Dante. We've got the 1970s King Kong. I've yet to watch this movie. We've got Life Force. I've yet to watch that movie. We've got Ouija. This actually just came out. Um, I've still yet to watch this, so i got to check that bad boy out. We've got Piranha in the Vein of Alligator, just an absolute classically hilarious movie of a send-up of Jaws. Another Joe Dante movie right there. Fantastic. We've got John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. I've yet to see that movie. We've got The Return of the Living Dead. I've yet to see that movie. We've got Rollerball, just a great, the original Rollerball, great fucking James Conn movie right there. We've got Species, it's a wild movie from the 90s. And then finishing us off for Scream Factory is They Live, another great John Carpenter movie. John Carpenter, just really, really big fan in the Scream Factory. He's got all over that place. Um, up next, we've got, as a companion to Scream Factory, they also have what's called Shout Factory. So I've got a few titles from them. We kick it off with Mr. Mom. We've got the Legally Blonde collection, the two-movie collection. We've got Used Cars. I've yet to watch this movie. We've got the 80s sci-fi movie Explorers. we got young Ethan Hawke in there. So look at that, just fucking hilarious. Young Ethan Hawke, so boyish. We've got Havoc. We've got Platoon. And then we've got the classic War Games. And then we've got our Vestron. I was late to the Vestron party, so I'm missing a lot of the earlier titles. i got to hunt all these down. Um, but I've made a little headway in the single-digit ones. This was the ninth in the collection, which is Wishmaster Collection. I haven't seen any of these, so i got to catch up on those. Um, the 18th one was Shivers. I haven't seen that one. Number 19 was Little Monsters. I haven't seen that one. Um, and then now this just all goes in numbered order because I have from uh, 18 onwards. Um, so we've got number 20, The Wraith, a, just a weird little Charlie Sheen movie. Um, we got 21, Sundown. I haven't seen that one. We got 22, Dementia 13. I haven't seen that one. We got 23, Steel Dawn. I haven't watched that one. As you can tell, I like to collect my Vestron ones, but I don't like to watch my Vestron ones. For 24, we got Candyman, Day of the Dead. I haven't seen that one. For 25, we got Dream a Little Dream, The Cory Boys. I haven't seen that one. 
Number 26, we've got Extreme Prejudice. I haven't seen that one. Number 27, a movie I actually have seen, but not when it was Vestron. I just saw it back when I was a kid because of Jim Carrey. Earth Girls are easy. And then the latest one that come out, number 28, is Silent Night, Deadly Night, which has, I believe, three, four, and five in the series. Not even the first two, but I haven't seen any of those. Now we move on to our final bit of movies that are separated. Um, that They're not boutique labels, but I separate them from the regular A to Z collection simply because they are two of my favorite things. One of them is my Steven Spielberg collection. The other one is Disney. That's right. I separate all of my Disney movies into its own thing. So I figure we're going to go through those last ones and then we're going to cut the video. And then next video, you guys will come and I'll show you my entire A to Z collection. I separate it by genre. So we'll go through all those bad boys in the next video, but we'll finish it off with Spielberg and Disney. And we kick it off with The Adventures of Tintin. Fantastic Spielberg movie. We've got The Bridge of Spies. We've got Catch Me If You Can, one of my favorite Spielberg movies. We've got Close Encounters of the Third Kind. We've got E.T. We've got E.T. We've got E.T. And I think we've got E.T. <laughs> That's right, I have a lot of E.T. It's my favorite, my favorite movie, fuck off. One of my favorite movies. We've got Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. We've got Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. We've got Jaws. We've got Jurassic Park. We've got Lincoln. We've got Munich. We've got The Post. We've got Raiders of the Lost Ark. We've got Ready Player One. I would love the Ready Player One steelbook. If anybody has a fucking handle on that out there, let me know. We've got Schindler's List. We've got War of the Worlds. And last in his collection, we've got West Side Story. And we get into the piece de resistance, the Disney selection the Disney selection will start with the MCU. It gets its own spot at the beginning of Disney. We've got the first Ant-Man. I do it in alphabetical order. I don't do it in MCU release date order. I don't care for that. Uh, we got Ant-Man and the Wasp. We've got the Avengers. We've got the Avengers Age of Ultron. We've got Avengers Infinity War. And we've got Avengers, look at that, you're getting that fucking hard glare everywhere. Avengers Endgame. We've got Black Panther. We will soon have Black Panther Wakanda forever. We've got Black Widow. We've got Captain America, the first Avenger. We've got Captain America, the Winter Soldier. We've got Captain America, Civil War. Mostly all of these I have slipcovers except for a few. I gotta try and hunt all that down. We've got Captain Marvel. We've got Doctor Strange. We've got Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. We've got oop, The Eternals. And then even though I hated this movie, I also picked up this version simply because the artwork was fucking phenomenal. The artwork is better than the movie right there. And that is this version. Uh, this was like the Target um, exclusive of Eternals. I just love that fucking artwork. So I double dipped for that one because I'm a steelbook collector. And that artwork for that one suckered me in. We got Guardians of the Galaxy. We got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. We've got The Incredible Hulk. We've got Iron Man. We've got Iron Man 2. And we've got Iron Man 3. We've got Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. We've got Spider-Man Homecoming. We've got Spider-Man Far From Home. And we've got Spider-Man No Way Home. We've got Thor. We've got Thor The Dark World. We've got Thor Ragnarok. And last but not least, 
we have Thor, Love, and Thunder. Now we have one of my favorite sections in the area, and that is the Pixar section of Disney. And we kick it off with A Bug's Life. We've got Brave. We've got Cars. We've got Cars 2. We've got Finding Dory. We've got Finding Nemo. We've got The Good Dinosaur. We've got The Incredibles 2. We've got Inside Out. Lightyear. Luca. Monsters University. Onward. Toy Story 2. Toy Story 3. Toy Story 4. Turning Red. And Up. And that is the steelbook portion of Pixar, but we've also got some slipcovers. We've got Brave again. We've got Cars 2. We've got Cars 3. We've got Coco. We've got The Good Dinosaur. We've got The First Incredibles. We've got Incredibles 2. We've got Monsters University. This is the Blu-ray, Blu-ray 3D and all that bad jazz. And then we've got just the regular collector's edition for the Blu-ray and all that jazz. We've got Ratatouille. And last but not least, we've got Soul. So I think the first Monsters, Inc. and the first Toy Story are the only ones that I still need to pick up in either slipcover or steelbook format. So not too bad. Chugging along there. I want to try and get all of the slipcovers and all of the steelbooks for Pixar because there's so much I love Pixar. Um, but that is going to be a battle. Actually, I forgot about Wally. -E. Um, I need well, I have Wally -E in the Criterion, but I want uh, the regular slipcover and then that steel book. The steel book for Wally -E and Ratatouille are so nice, but they're so expensive to find. Fuck. Now we have our regular Disney theatrical movies. Uh, we got our regular slipcovers and then our steel books. We start with the absolute classic 101 Dalmatians. We've got another classic Bambi. That is the Diamond Edition. We've got the 25th Anniversary Edition. This is the signature collection of Beauty and the Beast. We've got Big Hero 6. We've got Bolt. We've got the Diamond Edition of Cinderella. We've got the 70th, the, seven, blah, 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 the 70th anniversary of Dumbo. And then we have the 75th anniversary of Dumbo. We've got the Disney Movie Club exclusive of the Fox and the Hound to movie collection. We've got the first Frozen. We've got the second Frozen. We've got The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the two movie collection. We've got the Diamond Edition of Lady and the Tramp. We've got the Diamond Edition of The Lion King. We've got the regular edition of The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. We've got the Diamond Edition of The Little Mermaid. And then we have the Blu-ray 3D Diamond Edition of The Little Mermaid. We've got Moana. Whoa, I'm dropping shit. We've got the 25th anniversary of Oliver and Company. We've got the Diamond Edition of Peter Pan. I really love that fucking cover. We've got Disney's Planes. We've got the Diamond Edition of Sleeping Beauty. We have the Signature Collection for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. We just have Tarzan. We have Wreck-It Ralph. And last in the slipcovers, we have Zootopia. As for our steelbooks, we have Cinderella. 
We've got Encanto. We've got the first Frozen. We've got Moana. We've got the original Mulan. We've got The Nightmare Before Christmas. We got Ralph Breaks the Internet. We got Raya and the Last Dragon. We've got Tangled. And then we also have Zootopia again. And then now we have all of our Disney live action movies. We start with the slipcovers, as always. We've got Aladdin. You got Alexander and the fucking big ass fucking word mouth there. You got in the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. We got Alice in Wonderland. We got the live action Beauty and the Beast. We've got Christopher Robin. We've got Cinderella. We've got Dumbo. We've got The Finest Hours. We got a classic Heavyweights. We got Into the Woods. We've got The Jungle Book. We've got The Jungle Cruise. We've got The Lion King. We've got The Lone Ranger. We've got Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. We've got Mary Poppins Returns. We've got McFarland USA. We've got Million Dollar Arm. We've got Miracle. We've got this Target exclusive of Mulan. We've got Muppets Christmas Carol, baby. We've got the Muppets. We've got Muppets Most Wanted. We've got Oz the Great and Powerful. We've got Pete's Dragon. We've got the remake of Pete's Dragon. We've got Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. We've got Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. There's rumors of Pirates 1 through 5 getting a steelbook collection, which I would be the happiest camper on the face of the earth if we got that. I would fucking pay exorbitant amounts of money for that. We have the Princess Diaries 2 movie collection. We've got Tomorrowland, underrated movie. We've got Tron Legacy. And then we've got one of my favorite movies of all time, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And then we also have our Steelbook live action movies. We kick it off with A Wrinkle in Time, the live action Beauty and the Beast. We've got Cruella. We've got Dumbo. We've got The Jungle Book. We've got The Lion King. We've got The First Maleficent. We've got Nutcracker in the Four Realms. And then we've got Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And then now we finish it off with our Disney Star Wars. And last but not least, the tail end before we get to it is all of my nature documentaries because I love me some nature documentaries. So we've got Rogue One, a Star Wars story. We've got Solo, a Star Wars story. And then we've got The Force Awakens. We've got The Last Jedi. And we've got Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. And then in one of my favorite collections right here, we've got our nature documentaries, our BBC ones, our David Attenborough classics. We've got A Perfect Planet, just fucking masterful that is. We've got Blue Planet 2. We've got Dynasties. We've got the Green Planet. We've got Planet Earth 2. We got Serengeti. And last but not least, we have Seven Worlds, One Planet. I have so many more of these, but they're all just DVDs, so I'm not showing those ones off. It's simply just the Blu-ray 4K and all that good stuff ones. But that'll do it for our collection here in part one. Be sure to come back for part two where we're going to go into all the other good stuff, A through Z, all the genres, and we're going to see all the other good stuff that we have in this collection. But that'll do it for all of us here at The Outpost today. Until the next time, you have been you, I have been me. These are the movies that we love so much, and I'll see you at the movies.